So there was always a sense of gratitude that God has given me such nice parents, such lovely sisters, so many talents. So when I was in 12th standard, this thing became so overwhelming for me that I decided that I should leave home, find out God, say thank you to God, pay my heartiest gratitude, and then come back and resume my career. I was weeping. I was saying, no, what am I thinking, man? I'll spoil my career. What will happen to my parents? No, I should not. No, I should not think about this. <sighs> so then I wrote the letter to my parents. Thank you very much, Josh Talks, for inviting me. Today, Amog Das is on the stage of Josh Talks. So I'm feeling very fortunate. Thank you very much once again. So today I'm going to share some of the uh, unique incidences which happened in my life, which I have never shared before. Of course, some you might have heard, but some of them you might not have heard. So today I'm going to share my journey of my quest in spirituality, my quest for God, my quest for fulfillment. So get set, go. So today you might be expecting that maybe today Amogila Ji is there, so some of you Bhajan Kirtan is going to be there. Well, today it is just going to be my journey right from very beginning. So my early childhood was in Northeast as my father was a government officer. So we stayed in Northeast. And of course, Northeast is so much full of natural beauty, uh, so many wonderful rivers and mountain ranges. So from our home's window, we could see Kanchanjunga and Kanchanjunga and its mountain peaks having the beam of sunlight, so golden peaks. So everything was so exotic. In fact, my mother used to share the beauty of this nature and then she would say, just see how beautiful this is. This river, these rivers are so beautiful. These mountains are so beautiful. These birds are so beautiful. And the butterflies are so beautiful. And by this, she was in a subtle way making my faith in God stronger. Uh, during my school days, uh, of course, I was very sporty. I was like a very normal guy. You know, don't think that, you know, Amog Lilapu might have descended from somewhere on higher planetary, from higher planetary system. He descended on Earth. No, it was not like that. I was a very ordinary boy, uh, playful, of course, good in academics as well. In extracurricular activities, I was good at painting, sketching, singing, dancing. And I could see that God has given me everything the best. So there was always a sense of gratitude that God has given me such nice parents, such lovely sisters, so many talents. In academics, I am good. In sports, in extracurricular activities, everything is so good. So, God has been so kind to me. But I would always think that God has given me so much. What have I given in return to God? So, I would feel that I am very ungrateful. God has given me everything nice. But I am so ungrateful that I am not doing anything in return to God. So, any new achievement which would come in my life would give me pleasure, would give me sense of achievement. Yet, at the same time, I would feel that I am so ungrateful. God has given me this as well. But I am such a rascal. I am so ungrateful. So this would always suffocate me also to some extent. And of course, uh, uh, I was good in studies. So once this happened, then I, I was in 7th standard. And in the NCERT Sanskrit book, there were 7 verses of the Bhagavad Gita. And there was one verse which was very striking. And that verse was Chanchalam hi mana Krishna Pramathi Balavat Dilam. That mind is very chanchal, very restless, Pramathi, mad, Balavat, very powerful, very strong, and Dilam, and also very stubborn. I could see that, yes, that's my mind. How come an NCERT book know about the nature of my mind? And then I went to my Sanskrit teacher. I said, ma'am, how come this NCERT book knows about the nature of my mind? Because we are studying about the world outside, but here is something which is exposing the world inside. Actually, my mind is like this. How come? This book know about my nature, the nature of my mind. So then my teacher told me, uh, Beta, my dear son, in your syllabus there are seven shlokas from the Bhagavad Gita, but otherwise there are 700 shlokas, there are 700 verses in the Bhagavad Gita. So I was thinking, wow, this Bhagavad Gita has exposed me. Yes, this Bhagavad Gita has exposed me. When these seven verses have exposed me so much, then what about those 700 verses? Oh, they would expose me to such an extent. So I was very anxious to get exposed by the book, this glorious book, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So from there started the thirst for reading Bhagavad Gita. So often, you know, hidingly, 
I would read Bhagavad Gita because at that time the, the focus was on career. But still I would read Bhagavad Gita of various authors. And in between I also read uh, Bhagavad Gita by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada, which was not just intellectually very stimulating, yet at the same time I could see that this person is so anxious, so desperate to give us God. This person is addicted to God. So, so here came the, the, the thirst for Bhagavad Gita was getting quenched, but yet at the same time I could see that uh, uh, I should nourish myself, yet at the same time I should nourish others' lives as well. Earlier my ambition was to become a millionaire so that I make a lot of money and with this money I would, uh, I would help the needy people, the poor people. But then I realized that people in this world they are suffering less because of the body, more because of the mind. So I should serve the mind. But then I recalled that my mind became so healthy, so much refreshed, uplifted, purified, sanctified by reading the Bhagavad Gita. So I should actually give this knowledge to the people. Yes. So then I changed my ambition. Instead of becoming a millionaire or billionaire, I thought that I should become a monk. So when I was in 12th standard, this thing became so overwhelming for me that I decided that I should leave home, find out God, say thank you to God, pay my heartiest gratitude, and then come back and resume my career. So then, I was weeping. I was saying, no, what am I thinking, man? I'll spoil my career. What will happen to my parents? No, I should not. No, I should not think about this. And at that time, I was a devotee of Lord Shiva. Very devoted to Lord Shiva. And I prayed to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, please help me. What's happening to me? I should not leave home. How come this desire is coming to my mind? Please help me. But Lord Shiva did not help me at all. Because he also wanted me that I should grow in life. And for that, I have to come out of this comfort zone of home. So then I wrote the letter to my parents, my lovely parents. I am leaving home in search of God because God has given me everything the best including you. So today I am leaving home in search of God. Once I find out God, I will find him, say thank you to him and then I would return. Please do not worry. By the time you would read this letter, I have gone far away. Your son. And then I wrote the name and then dropped this letter and then left home. But I was thinking that, but where should I go? So then I moved from that place to Birla Mandir, Lakshmi Narayan Temple, which was also near my home. I was there having darshan, and then I heard a discourse. So there was some group of Marwadi people. And they said, uh, and, I, and I met one person, very pious person, and we had good conversation. And then he said, okay, who are you? I said, I, I left home in search of God. He said, oh, really? Come along with us. We are going to Jaipur. So then from there, I went to... Hyderabad in the train, like in train when I, was, when I used to travel because I was not carrying any money. So I used to sit next to toilet so that nobody asked me for the ticket because I don't have money, I don't have ticket. So I would sit next to wash basin or sit next to the door or sit next to the toilet and cover entire journey sitting next to toilet by the time I reach my destination. So in this way I, I was traveling, so I reached uh, Hyderabad. So then finally I decided that okay, in South India I have roamed around. I met many teachers, but now I think I should go to near Himalayas. I should go to Haridwar and Rishikesh. So when I was in Haridwar, so I met one more spiritual aspirant. His name was Ankur Vaidya. And he had done his B.Tech. He also worked for a couple of years and then he had left his job. And now he was in Haridwar. I was very much impressed. I, I thought that I am seeking to become a B.Tech uh, you know, later on. But here is a B.Tech who has done engineering. And he has done his job and yet he is not satisfied. So I asked him, hey, you did your B.Tech man, so how come you left it? And somehow he said, you know, he said, you know, well, yeah, I was earning, but I was not satisfied. Just by filling the belly and satisfying the senses, the heart cannot be satisfied. Oh, I could see, my God, he is sincere, yes. Because earlier I had this impression, sadhu means there were those who are uneducated, those who are illiterate, those who are good for nothing, they could not find a job. Now they just want to lie down and uh, spend a lazy life full of lethargy. But here I could see someone who, who, is, who is educated as well. And he has got a spiritual thirst. There I saw some group of devotees who were there from foreign country. And they were chanting Hare Krishna. And they were distributing khichdi. I was very hungry as well. I said, oh, khichdi, I'm hungry. So I then, I joined them. And then we had very good philosophical discussion. 
And first time I could see I was getting very bona fide, genuine, authentic, heart transforming, heart uplifting answers to the questions. So then from Haridwar, I took the train back to Delhi. So back to square one. So then I come to Iskon east of Kailash. So I reached there and they said, oh, you have come here. I see. Uh, how many, since, since how many years are you coming? I said, this is my first day. Okay. So how can you serve you? I said, well, I have come here to join. Oh. They thought this guy is crazy because first day he has come to join. Usually people, people join after many years of practices and all. Then they join. Okay, you have come here to join. Yeah. Okay. They said, actually, you should go home. Keep coming. And we'll see your sincerity. And then after a few years, then you can join. I said, I said well, I have left my home. Now I come to join. If you will not allow me to stay here, then I'll sleep somewhere outside on footpath. I'll take rest there because I'm now habitual. In the beginning, of course, it was very difficult for me to beg, to say, can I, can you please help me? So my ego would say, hey, come on, how can you beg? But then I thought, no, I should not listen to this voice of ego. I should beg. Any sincere spiritual practitioner should beg. So I should also beg. So I said, well, I'm habitual of begging. I can do that. If you'll not allow me, I'll go and um, stay somewhere outside on the road. On the roadside, I'll, I'll sleep there then. They could see that this guy is actually mentally gone. I said, okay, okay, you be inside. And then I started getting answers to all my questions, meeting with such scholarly devotees like Madan Mohan Prabhu. So then, after staying for a few months in Iskon East of Kailash in the year, two, in the year 2000, so then I called my parents, my, my parents, they came, of course, and there was so much of emotional exchanges. Then I went back home. So then I started preparing again for uh, engineering entrance exam. And then uh, I, I could crack in many places. Uh, of course, but my parents said, no, you would be in Delhi. All right. So I did my graduation, my B.Tech in computer science, job as well in a, in a software company. And uh, while working in the software company, uh, I also went to USA. So I was very anxious to go to USA because in India, there is a hype. We should go to USA. USA, yes. But the, the kind of expectation I had, I was disappointed. So then somebody told me, well, you should go to New York's nightlife, man. Nightlife of New York. So I had my ticket and then went to New York. Saw the nightlife of uh, New York. Yeah, flashy, glamorous. But again, disappointing. So I told that guy, I said, yeah, I went for this New York nightlife experience, but uh, well, not very much impressed. He said, well, New York is nothing. You should go to Las Vegas. Las Vegas means Sin City. You should go to Sin City, Las Vegas. Nightlife of Las Vegas. All right. So now let me go to Las Vegas. So I went to Las Vegas. So it was more flashy, more colorful, more billboards, broad roads, skyscraper buildings. Nice. But again, it was disappointing. That this is what Indians are craving for. Well, broad roads, skyscraper buildings. Of course, cleanliness is there. People are more disciplined in terms of traffic rules. Good. But um, not very impressive. So I was feeling very dried up being in USA because I, I, I was not meeting devotees. So I started exploring uh, the Hare Krishna devotees in USA because I saw devotees from the foreign countries in, in Haridwar. So I had that memory that yes, I should, I should meet devotees somewhere. So I explored and met the devotees. And this way, whatever months I could spend in USA, but so I spent in association with devotees. But yes, here I had the overview, the glimpse of spiritual life as well as flashy, glossy, materialistic life. Both the things were there at my purview. And I could clearly see that spiritual life is absolutely substantial. Materialistic life is so hollow and shallow, although on the surface, on the face value, it is very glossy and very flashy. But inside, it is so dark, it is so selfish, it is so much filled with egotism, lust, anger, exploitation. So there was no doubt that maybe this material life has got its own side, I should have explored. I explored it. I explored it. It was so hollow and shallow. So much full of selfishness. Spiritual life was full of selflessness. So I decided that, okay, once I'm done with this, my few years of getting money, I would join back as a monk because I, I got the glimpse, I got the trailer. But now 
I made this ambition that yes, my desire was to pay my gratitude to God. And the best way to offer my gratitude to God is that whatever God has given to me, I should give it back to God by helping people coming closer to the grace of God. And by doing this, I would have expressed my deepest gratitude. That's my expression of love. That is what I should be doing. So I stayed at home. Of course, I worked for a few years. I earned money. I gave it to my parents, not as a price of their love. That love is priceless. I would always remain grateful to my parents. And I'm still grateful to my parents. By their blessings in the year 2010, on the day of Janmashtami, I went back to the temple, joined back as a monk, took VRS, voluntary retirement from services, and then joined back on Janmashtami. And then after 15 days, there was Radha Ashtami. On the day of Radha Ashtami, I took saffron clothes, which is these colors. This, this color saffron is a color of service. This color is of deep attachment to God. So I could say that, yes, now I belong to his family, God's family. And in this way, and then I stayed there in Iskon East of Kalash for three years, uh, being a monk. And then I was transferred to Iskon Dwarka. I stayed in Dwa Iskon Dwarka. I'm still... Uh, serving there in Iskon Dwarka, Delhi, as a vice president there. And um, of course, so many diverse kind of services, preaching opportunities, management I could do. Uh, and um, today I'm in Josh Talks. I've been invited here to share my journey. So thank you very much, Josh Talks, for inviting me. So this was my journey that how I discovered my fulfillment, the avenue of my fulfillment. And I know that this is the avenue of fulfillment for everyone. So always have very sincere motivations and sincere intentions. And never ever get discouraged by failures. Like all throughout my journey, I was disappointed. But yet I never allowed that disappointment to overwhelm me. I kept on moving. I see sometimes that people, uh, they, they do not take to a path of spirituality because they had some kind of um, um, unpleasant experience. And then they leave the path of spirituality. But I continued. Just like in, if I take medicine from a doctor and the medicine does not work, that does not mean that I relinquish the world of doctors. I would go in search of better doctor. Similarly, we should not feel disappointed in our lives. We should keep working hard. We should be sincere in our endeavors. And when there is sincerity in the heart and then there is consistency, then the Lord actually rewards us because He is seeing each and every action. He is seeing our intentions as well as actions. Tell us what you think about this video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Josh Talks is now a Spotify exclusive podcast. The audio version of our talks will be available only on Spotify. If you like this video and you like to listen to more inspiring stories like this, please follow the Josh Talks podcast only on Spotify.